D. Walsh and Conor Barron's trainer, Tony Dunlop. <laughs> Got uh, Wal wealthy Waldo Walsh as well, and uh, Peter Turley, the assistant trainer in the camp. So we had we had a big fight uh, last week, big bill in Belfast, and a, a big performance by um, Dee Walsh against uh, Tommy Tolan. Uh, first of all, to, to yourself, Dee, uh, what 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 did you think of your performance? Well, I think uh, I did bring my best on the net, and kind of the effect I was saying. I was going to steal the show, you know what I mean, because of the hard work I put in it. So I knew what I was going to bring to the table, and, and I did that. And I, th I thought that any performance that I didn't get hit is a perfect one, you know what I mean? And that's it. That's what I thought of it, you know what I mean? It was, it was a good performance. Yeah. And Tony, you know, he's in there with a very experienced lad with a lot of local rivalry, Tommy Tolan. Did you uh, foresee any danger or with him getting in there, you know, because, you know, Tommy brings a tough game. Well, I always thought he'd be against Tommy Tone to be up to you. Tommy is very tough. And he, he definitely comes to win. And, um, I, and I thought he'd be against Tony. Even if Tony was younger in his prime, I thought he'd be against him. And, um, but when Tommy Tone knocked out JJ McDonough, yeah. you know what I mean? When JJ McDonough, I really thought he was a very good fitter. I was very surprised at that. So that stuck in the back of my mind. Yeah. You know what I mean? And plus, catch someone. And, and plus, something that many people know before that fight. Five weeks before, Dave was barred. Six weeks before, he had an injury to his arm. And only had that fight was the, was the, the um, Dave's bars. He, he never sparred that fight. So that was the back of my mind too, but in all honesty, in all honesty, I, I was very confident that there. And, and, and um, I, I could see that Dave would win the fight in Panama. And I was very happy with the, the, the match against Tommy. Even though, as I say, like, Tommy told me, very comes to win big, big heart, and, and, and like, you know what I mean, you don't have to go looking for him, probably that. but I always fancy to but he hadn't sparred for the fight, and um, things like that, I had me put it down the back of my mind, but I, I just knew that there was no problem, and Dave fought very, very good, and the defensive fighter, you know what I mean, yeah. and young, 22 years of age, speed, you know, I just, everything went according to plan, and he couldn't ask for any more. Yeah, and Peter, what impressed you most about his performance, was there any particular shots that you'd been working on, or? Um, it's whole performance, to be honest. Um, everything we worked on in the gym, he just, he, he just done it did he. Um, Even the wrestling part of it, me and Peter will oh, say, uh, say the clinches. Yeah. You know I mean? Me and Peter will work. Don't, say, be, don't be telling me your secret. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we will work for a while on clinches and like, so that we're not burning any nervous energy. Yeah. That um, the body club we're going to be a, a, a cover every department, so we're going to be comfortable for every fight. You know what I mean? Sure. And, that's what me and Peter do for more or less every night for good Pass. He has 13 professional bouts to his credit. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Tommy, the Tiger Tolan. <laughs> and his opponent across the ring. at the beginning. What exactly happened there? Well, I get into the ring. Well, there was actually a conversation that went on between a fella I know and the judge who judged the fit. And he basically said he was going to rob me. If he has a chance, he was going to rob me. And but Gary phoned up the British Basketball Board of Control. And Gary Hyde, Gary Hyde, yeah. yeah. And he got the judge banned from refereeing not only any of my fits, but any of, any of Gary's fitters' fits. And once I get in the ring, what he called, uh, I seen him with a scorecard, and I said to Gary, Gary, he had a scorecard there. Gary says, no, only referee is, but because of the referee's part. John Law is a, 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 a novice referee. Yeah, and yeah. experience and stuff, and he said to me, he asked the ref, the ref said he was judging, so Gary says, what he, called, he said to me what he want to do, and I says, look, a loss could be crucial to me on my record, it could, it not only could it ruin my career. It could ruin, like it could ruin your life because, yeah. like, the place I'm from and stuff, like, you could easily fall into the trap of like drinking drugs and stuff. And like I've seen it happen in the, like all my mates who all who box, you know what I mean? Like I, I just didn't want that happening. But when I turned around, like seeing, seeing the crowd and seeing them all cheering, it was a great atmosphere. I, 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 I couldn't let them down because of the money they spent to see me and yeah. like that we had waited the whole night. So I, I was there. That it was like 
if they do good rod, at least everybody who, who matters to me is going to see it. Yeah. So I, I, I thought that's what was in my head. And you're talking about your crowd, you had a massive crowd there. Do you, you know, that, there's not many fighters who've only had the amount of fights that you've had that could sell that amount of tickets. Yeah, uh, that's right. How, how, what do you put that down to? Do you, do you, no, do you have a popular fella around your area? Do you play football there? Yeah. Or? Well, <laughs> well he's, he's, that, he's like his trainer in that way. <laughs> well, um, uh, I sold what was it, uh, say 400 tickets. See, yeah. I, I work in a barber shop. Right. See, I, I, I have a deal with a lot of people. Like, so you made a lot of people through that, yeah. yeah. I sold that through hours. So I, not only do I know people from St. James, I know people from, say, Martitz, Divis, New Lodge, like even from people who I went to school with. And, like they, they, they all heard I was fading, so I wanted to come and support me, you know what I mean? So once I seen all them and so it, it spurred me on, it pumped me up and and that was it. Yeah. Tony, were you a little bit nervous though that, that he could have got distracted from the you know his game plan going into the fight, you know, by, by the the kerfuffle before the fight, you know, he, yeah. he got out of the ring at one stage. Were you like a little bit nervous that it's you know, he's a young fighter his head might be all over the place, you know, you know, getting back into the ring against well, a, a guy that could look, look yeah. to take your head off early. Well, all I did was, uh, it was actually, um, somebody said that the judge had said that he fancied Tommy told him in the fight. And he says, um, and I just sort of threw me head that he was doing referee, but I don't know what I mean. And um, I, I knew this myself. And, and, and it, like, it was like sort of thing, like, you're fighting your hometown, you know what I mean? How about Fantage, where the boxer goes nice to have, two Belfast, man. All we wanted was a level playing field. And I myself knew that there'd be a chance this will not be a level playing field. I mean, I, yeah. I, knew, I knew it myself. So, as far as I'm being worried, so sorry, I wasn't worried. Because yeah. I wasn't going to have it. Because yeah. it was already reported that Barry's box was going to As far as I was concerned, I, I didn't want to be worried. Because yeah. I wanted a level playing field, fair play, and that's all I want. And, and I, was, I, I was not worried about it because I just didn't want it at all. But, um, it's a thing went on, you know what I mean? They just turned around and I went to take this. And, uh, as far as I was concerned, I wasn't was happy about it. But uh, John Campbell from the British Basketball Control came in and changed him afterwards and says, a very good performance day, but you were a wee bit over anxious. Uh, and, uh, and that's true, he was a wee bit over anxious, a wee bit going forward. Yeah. Just a wee bit of his time, just over. And the reason he was over anxious is because he didn't want to take out the risk of letting the thing go to the judges. Yeah. So it did affect his performance, he had a good performance, but it affected it. Because yeah. that was in the back of his mind. He was in there under pressure as if he was running the fight in Germany. Yeah. We had to knock him out to get a draw. Yeah. And that's his attitude then too. He said, I've I, 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 been knocking the guy out. Yeah. Have you stopped him? Yeah. Because he, he says he'll take it, he says he'll take it the decision of the judge's hands, I do it myself. Yeah. So we're going to end up with that pressure on you in your third pro fight. No, it's just that nice. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think we'll be pretty spots more than two dollars in this here. Go! 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 So it's probably going back to uh, what Tony said about you trying to get him out of there. Did you feel that you had the power to get him out of there early, or you know, was it more only as the rounds got on you, so you felt more comfortable about that? Yeah, well, I, I never I wouldn't say that I don't rate myself as a hard puncher because I, I feel that I can't punch, but I never realised that the punch that I had, like when I, when I really put like bad intentions into the punches, that I have such a big punch because it was because of the reason I was so pumped up. You know what I mean? It was. I hadn't, I hadn't done against Tommy Tolan, but every every punch I threw, I wanted to do complete damage. You know what I mean? So from now on, that'll be my mindset. Is that the, that you can? You have yeah, to, so the one thing you're taking out of it is that you've got the confidence that you can punch, stop yeah. stop fighters. Yeah, because you kind of you, although it wasn't a, a knock a knockout per se, it was a, you know you kind of ground them down as the as the rounds went on. 
did you did you feel that he was a, a danger and still even towards the oh, you know from when he stopped could you feel that he, you know he was looking to take you out as well? Oh, definitely. Like, as, as many times as I say would say I hurt him and stuff, they, I, that's what they had to give to Tommy. He's so tough. He, he can back every single time. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, th- there's always a threat when when it comes to say Tommy Tony because not only he, he came down to a bit, like he had trained for six weeks. That was yeah. say the best Tommy Tony that you were going to get, so that's why I trained in my best, and as you said about the, the punch bar, you always have that there in the back of your mind about John Joe McDonough, and yeah. then they don't get Carlos, don't get Carlos, but, but I was over anxious at, at stages because of the start, and because it was yeah. so pumped up, and the crowd was getting behind me and all, but uh, I, I, I was, it was, it was always in the back of your head a wee bit, uh, yeah. don't, get, don't, get too, don't go too mad. And so that, that fight was actually after the main event when... Uh, the large majority of the crowd had left, but there was still, uh, you know, a, a small but vociferous crowd that had gathered round the apron. Did they, did they really spur you on? Because they were very loud, both sides yeah. of, of the fans, yeah? Yeah, it, like, as I said, everything happens for a reason. Like, if it, my fight had been on maybe before the main event, there wouldn't have been like, as big as an atmosphere. So maybe it was a good thing that, that it was on after the main event. Yeah. But, uh, but saying that there, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like that to happen again because like I, I had that from say about half two that day, and I was ready from yeah. here on from half five. I was bandaged still I was ready to go because you could go at any stage when once you're on a flu. So and then we never get in the ring till what was it after eleven o'clock. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't like it to happen again, but everything happens for a reason, and thankfully. I wouldn't. Wait, 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 wait. Shades of a very famous boxer in there. Who's your, who, who are your influences out there at the moment? Because one seems very obvious, but yeah. uh, maybe who, who are the others? <laughs> well, my, my favourite is, is the ones I love, is the ones who hit and don't get hit at all. Like yeah. Muhammad Ali, when he was Kaisers Clay, uh, Roy Jones, Pernell Whitaker, Willie Pep, obviously Floyd Mayweather, I don't know But any fighters like that have got that sixth dead. Even nowadays, there's a fellow called Adrian Bruner. He's just got the exact same stead and he's flashy. Like I, I like I like flash, I like yeah. I like to be different. You know what yeah. I mean? I like to have stead. So they're my they're my idols. Yeah. So uh, talking about those fighters, do you watch it? Do you, you do you watch a lot of boxing even when you're at home? A lot of boxing. Like I found that like I found that uh training. I'm watching it in the house and then when I'm in work I read boxing magazines or yeah. I'm checking up boxing on my phone. Yeah. I eat sleep and breathe it. Like sometimes I wake up when I'm sleeping. I yeah. wake up throwing punches, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and that is true. <laughs> so t- Tony, it must be a delight to have a lad like that uh, in the gym, you know, who, who like, you know, lives boxing and, yeah. you know, is really, because a lot of guys, even a lot of very good guys, you don't have to be interested in boxing, but, you know, uh, to be a good boxer, and a lot of good boxers aren't actually interested in boxing, but a guy that is so, de- you know, that sh- does show a lot of dedication, not just the, your own training, but to the game and learning and improving as well. Does that make your job a lot easier? Yeah, but well, you're with a kid here who, um, as far as like the outside life is concerned, somebody says, as my nose too, says like for a boxer, the outside life is like a main field, because that most things you have to distract them. But as far as the world's concerned, unlike a lot of today's um, society, which is full of all this drink, drinking and, and party and this hip hop stuff, the day world's just, he doesn't you know, go near drugs, doesn't take drink, he doesn't need it. Yeah. He's just a natural kid, you know what I mean? And, and, and he can get on without all that stuff. So, uh, and as far as dedication is concerned, he's 100% dedicated. And he's very, very talented. And he's getting knocked out there by one of the best managers you, you could ever get. To be honest with you, Gary Haid, is going to pick and choose the opponents and, and get them regular fights. So, uh, they have a path put in front of you, but there's no brick walls there, and, and there's no, no obstacles. And, and they have a kid who's talented like that, who's to train. It does make my job a lot easier. Yeah. No, not just that, it gives you plenty of heart on it. Yeah. You know this kid is going to complete, he's just going to, his head says me today, he's just going to come from strength to strength, you know what I mean? He's going to improve 
And as, as far as the stage is concerned, he's talking about Roy Jones Jr. and me, when I'm really pat all they were. <coughs> as far as his stage is concerned, the hands down, the Roy Jones sort of stayed for a number of This is a new thing to Irish boxing. And like people really took to it. And as far as that fight's concerned, um, last Friday night, even when I was doing the barber shop, there was all kids coming from the falls road, they're all dead excited about him. Yeah. Because you know, he brings this fly, this yeah. stain, and it's just like, it's a superstar thing, you know what I mean? And in the future, Dave Walsh is going to become a big, big name. And, 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 and boxing in Ireland, he'll become the biggest name in boxing. Don't, don't give him too big, hey. Yeah, no, <laughs> just, no, I was going to say something more that, but I'll just keep it nice and humble and modest. As I would always be. <laughs> so, but Peter, between, between the two of you, how do you split up the training duties of oh, four day or the some? How do you how do you work it between the two of you? No, basically it just goes on a night to night thing. Um, yeah. Tony has most of he he leads for most of the training. I have a deal where we put a fitness conditioning. I have a commitment pads and stuff. Yeah. But we will work between us. Work yeah. between us. Good. Um, so a good team. Uh, well, I just work on the Tony. Team. He he's he's the boss. Yeah. And you, we did think you had a fight coming up uh, in uh, Boston, Massachusetts uh, next month, but uh, well, that's off, is it? And But there's news of an, another fight. Yeah, yeah, well, he actually got word today that the, the fight in Boston's called off, and but there's word that I'm getting on a bill in LA a week before the, the Rigondo via Kennedy fight in, in the undercard of Manny Pacquiao versus Tim Free Bailey. So Gary's going to be out there, so he's more or less, if he cancelled the Boston one, he'll have a fight ready for me in LA. Either It's either a week after or a week before, I'm not too sure, but yeah. it, it's when he's going to be out there. Yeah. So I'm happy enough, they give you, if you trade Boston for LA, I, I've been in LA, it, it is the <laughs> So it's a, a, a taste of international boxing as well. It's got to be it's good for his development as well, Tony. Yeah, for, in Los Angeles, yeah. Yeah. Well, no matter where he fights, you know, I was, Gary Hay does his job, you know what I mean? And he's going to get him fights tomorrow. As a matter of fact, he supposed to fight his second fight in Las Vegas. Yeah. Only the, the license at the time from the BUI just haven't given to him at the time. And, um, and things like that, Gary Hay is going to get him tanked fights in the United States and Los Angeles and the Americans out there will see his kids dead. Like John Dolly went out there, Andy Lee's out there. And as far as Dolly's concerned, and at least thinking for more than a little bit, the two of them have done very well. As far as Dolly's concerned, Dolly um, built up a big, big name massive, there. Massive, massive I mean? following. And, and yeah, a massive yeah. gate then, a lot of people want to see him. So if, yeah. if Dee Walsh was out here, no, he, he'd be getting connected with the, the best promoters out there. Very, well. very different style though between uh, Dee and John Dolly, you know. Do you think a lot of the Americans expect an Irish guy to be face first, just slugging rather than, you know, Dave's Day, got a, 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 almost an American style rather than an Irish yeah. style? I said, when well, you see, they do expect the Irish man to come out there like Dolly Bowles, a yeah. slugger. He yeah. won't leave him be a boxer, he's out yeah. there now. But that's what makes Dave so exciting and different, as he says. Dave's got this, like, sort of, sort of his black style, you know what I mean? Like, like Roy Jones Jr. maybe I just sort of relaxed, told it. Yeah. And, and they've seen Irish man fight like that, you know, and he's just got that. It, it seems to be very appealing to the public. Boxing public, yeah. and it's fight that it's never happened before. No, no Irish man's ever went fight like this before, and it's completely different. It's going to go on here, you know what I mean? Uh, the, with the lads oh, in the gym oh, as well. Oh, you, oh, you see the younger lads in the gym sort of trying to copy his style. Well, we train with the Uptons, yeah. so they're just like me. Yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's the slickest boxing gym in Ireland, anyway. <laughs> There's a lot of kids, they won't want them to really fit that way. Yeah. Some of them would, some of them so won't. It suits some, it doesn't suit others. It suits yeah. so guys with reflexes, yeah. but well, it's like. No, like it's, a, it's a thing that we wouldn't teach, you know what I mean? Just keep your hands up, fight on. Yeah. But if you've got that relaxation and that talent, you know what I mean? And, and that's what it is. Do you not worry, you know, do you, you do see a lot of fighters using that style, especially the Ingle style, you know, there's a lot of guys in England of a similar-ish style. Uh, and you worry about guys that, you know, once they step up a level that they'll they'll get caught and they, they'll, they'll land themselves in trouble. Uh, you know, also, if you have that style, you also need a granite chin. So do you not worry, you know, when he steps up a level that he could get caught and, you know, maybe yeah. get himself in trouble? You see, the dude said there's only room wasn't built at the end, you know what I mean? 
I'm well aware of this fact. When he steps up a level, that things will be a bit dangerous. I'd be, and I'd be watching him. So as time goes on, I'd be telling him, mm. just uh, when you're in close, hands up a bit more and more twist and turn and things like that. But he may be okay, because there are more guys seem to get away with it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I just wait to see what he's like, but through time, as he steps up a level, I, I, I would be saying, tell him, Peter, do. Because Peter's saying that the way we work, me and Peter work basically here on a 50 50 thing, you know what I mean? Uh, and um, as far as he's concerned, I, I'd be telling him, be a bit more defense, hands up, be a bit closer and say it. I'm going to work on that as time goes on, yeah. because you, know, you, you might have to work on that there. Yeah. As you say, if not, well, if it works, don't fix it. Yeah. You know what I mean? If it stops working, it'll be fixed gradually. Yeah. And mm. to, to finish up, when, when do you think we're going to see you back in Ireland again? Well, hopefully as soon as possible. Hopefully in Belfast as soon as possible. Because like, you've seen the crowd and you've seen everything. And by the looks of it, a lot of people are excited by my, my stay, you know what I mean? And they think that I could be somebody. So people will come out and watch. And the more people come out and watch, the better. Because that spurred me on. It definitely spurred me on the on it. So I would love to get back and fed in Ireland as soon as possible. Great. Well, listen, thanks for talking to us, guys, and uh, we look forward to seeing you back in the ring, Dee. Down on it, cheers. Cheers, mate. <laughs>